All right, guys, this is part three of your Microsoft Word uh, 2019 certification practice project. And this brings us to number 21. All right, and we're just kind of continuing and moving right along here. So number 21 says change the page margins to narrow. All right, so hopefully you downloaded this document here. Boom. And um, what you're going to see under the layout tab is that you have a margins group here. And we have a couple presets here, uh, normal, narrow, moderate, wide, and this one says it wants us to use the narrow margins, which basically gives us about half an inch on all sides of our document. All right, and that one's done. Apply the intense emphasis style to the paragraph after the picture on page four. All right, so on page four, looks like this is page five, after the picture on page four. All right, so right here, see this picture on page four? All this stuff right here, apply the intense emphasis style to the paragraph after the picture on page four. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to select this whole paragraph here, and under the Home tab, you're going to see all of our font styles. And we touched on this a little bit, but font styles in Microsoft Word they do a lot of things other than just change the look of the font on the page. Um, some of these things like heading styles, they actually um, tell Microsoft Word what to include if you were to use a table of contents. All right, Everything that's set to a heading or a title style will automatically be put, put into a table of contents. All right? And I think we play with table of contents a little bit later in this review. But it says apply intense emphasis. All right, So uh, you'll see right here. Um, intense emphasis and just go ahead and click on it and that's kind of what it looks like right there all right um, insert a banded quote on the bottom center of the cover page and insert a enter a banded quote that's supposed to be insert a banded quote text box in the bottom center of the cover page and insert the text Claudia uh, K W O K I don't know what this is, but we're going to go ahead and insert it. Um, I think it's actually on the page already. So let's go to the cover page. And I want to say we just have to kind of click and drag some text. Here's our cover page right here. No, it's not there. So we're going to go to insert and we're going to see under text box, we do have different kinds of text box. And this says it wants a banded quote text box right here. It definitely didn't go to the bottom of my cover page. So let me go ahead and just take it up. I'm just going to scoot it up to my cover page. Maybe I wasn't clicked on my cover page. I'm on page 5 of 5 here. I'm just going to hit X. Control X. I must have been clicked down there still. Click in your cover page somewhere. I'm going to click down here. Control V. There's my banded quote text box. Where does it say to put it? at the bottom center of the cover page. All right. We got to go ahead and type in <clears throat> Claudia. So go ahead and click in your text box and you can start typing. Claudia, no comma, K W O K. O A G N one one nine. All right, and that's what they want. They said, um, click on the edge of the text box, and this is how we're going to align it. I guess we're going to go to the Drawing Tools Format tab, and um, under Position, we're going to say More Layout Options, <clears throat> and change it from margin to page under vertical and horizontal. So under horizontal and the vertical group, we're going to go ahead and change it from margin to page. All right, and go ahead and read the question again. It says, insert a banded quote in the bottom center of the cover page and insert the text, Claudia, you know, O K W O A K. I K-W-O-A-K, I don't know what that is. All right, and then we're going to say OK. I think you could also do this a whole different way um, just by clicking on the text box and saying position. <clears throat> and if it says bottom center, you could just say 
bottom center like that. All right. <clears throat> All right. Um, update the table of contents. So we already have some table of contents up here. And all we have to do is actually update our table of contents. So click in it and you're going to see this little thing that says update table of contents right here. And if you clicked on, click on it, it says we want to say update entire table. And then say OK. Oop, I didn't click on it there. Update entire table, then click OK. All right. So just like that, that means throughout this page, basically Claudia's proposal for Mike's office is my only heading in here. And it is. If I had something else set to a heading style, that would also pop up into my table of contents. But I, it looks like I don't. I really don't. <clears throat> Below the heading, Claudia's proposal for Mike's office, insert the contents of the introduction.doc. All right, so if you guys didn't download this file, you're going to want to navigate back to the documents and go ahead and download this thing called introduction. All right. And um, in fact, I don't know if I did either. So I'm just going to go ahead and download it as well. Um, and I'm just going to put mine right on my desktop. It's called introduction. All right. So go back to your Word document. It says below the heading Claudia's proposal for Mike's office, which is right here. And we do have a little bit of space right there. Um, insert the contents of introduction. So we're going to go to the insert tab and we're going to say text from file. All right. You're going to notice um, right here, there's a little button here that says text and we have a group here that says object. And if you click this, we're going to say text from file. Um, if you were with me with the PowerPoint lessons, you remember that we inserted slides um, a couple of different ways and we said that we inserted slides from outlines if the document type was .doc or RTF. All right. Same thing with Microsoft Word. If it's asking you to insert um, contents from a .doc or an RTF, you're going to say text from file because that's a text document. If it's asking you to insert something from an Excel file or .xlsx, it's going to say insert object. So this is text from file. I'm going to go ahead and navigate to my desktop because that's where I just put this thing. And it's called introduction. All right. And it's basically just going to automatically import the text into your document. All right. Number 26, inspect the document and remove any headers, footers, or watermarks that are found. All right. So this is um, removing properties. So we're going to go to the file tab and we're going to say check for issues. We're going to inspect the document and make sure that everything is checked. All right. So we're going to put a check where it says link, even though I'm not really concerned about links. And I'm going to say inspect. And then I'm just going to go ahead and inspect all headers, footers, and watermarks. And there should be, see, we're used to using this one up here and removing all. But this question doesn't call for that. It says it, remove headers, footers, and watermarks. So we're going to say remove all and then hit close. All right. And if you notice, we just uh, removed our watermarks on our page. We actually had a watermark. I think it said draft. I should have brought that to your attention before I removed it. On page five, change the text wrapping to square. Right here is page five. And we do have an image. And if you remember, when we click on the image, to the right of the image, we have our text wrapping options here. On page five, change the text wrapping in, uh, of the on the image to square. All right. So it's the first option right there. And it does change the way that the text looks on your actual page. It, ch it changes um, everything about the actual page because it changes the way that the text actually wraps around the picture. That's why it's called wrap text. At the end of the document, change the line spacing of the last two paragraphs to exactly 14 points. All right. So right here, these last two paragraphs, go ahead and select them. And the words exactly tell me that this isn't like any kind of line spacing option that I can get to just by going right here. I actually have to go into my dialog box or I can go into line spacing options and um, under spacing, <clears throat> excuse me, under spacing, you're going to see line spacing. And if you click the drop down, you're going to see um, single, double, at least exactly. And we're going to go ahead and say to 
exactly 14 points. Just like that. And we're going to say OK. And that's it for this part of the review, guys. I will see you guys in part four of my...